when sex isn't happening or it's not specifically pleasurable for both of you, then that is revealing something about the nature of your marriage, just as the litmus paper is revealing something about the pH of the solution, no matter what that solution looks like in the beaker. Now that's about as far as I'm going to go when it comes to talking about chemistry, but I really want to use that to set the tone because a lot of the time on this podcast, I am talking about the importance of emotional intimacy, of communication, of being who you really are in your day-to-day -day interactions, of uncompromising intimacy in the sense that you are self-expressed and not withholding your internal truth just so that your partner is more comfortable. And I focus on emotional intimacy and how to build it because when it comes to long-term relationships, anything which isn't sex functions as foreplay. Those day-to-day -day interactions, how you say hello or goodbye when one of you leaves for work, how the evening winds up once you finish your work or put kids to bed or take the dogs for a walk or whatever it is, how intentional are you in connecting with one another? How much do you anticipate one another's needs and offer to bring in the trash cans when usually the other spouse does that? Like whatever the situation is, all those little moments, sure, it can be whether or not you bring flowers and whether you smile when you see one another, those are important too. And you can be intentional with romance, but maybe you're not especially romantic. You still can be, can bring a kind of care and connection and maybe a flirtatious energy some of the time to one another. And all of that in your daily life profoundly contributes to how often and how fulfilling the sex you're having is going to be. So that is why I focus on that. And to put it even more explicitly, what I'm about to share is anecdotal, but it's based on many years and many, many couples and my experience with them is that when couples reach out to work with me, they often, sometimes couples reach out because they really want to improve communication, but sometimes they feel pretty good about their communication and it's the passion, the sensuality, the erotic chemistry that they want to rekindle, that they want to kind of find their way back to loving one another in those ways, even if they already love one another in other ways. So when a couple reaches out wanting to work on their sex life, I always start with, I build rapport with them and I facilitate enhanced rapport between the two of them. Because if you're frustrated about your sex life, typically there's also necessarily what comes with that resentment, a kind of emotional shutdown, whatever the case may be. So. I know that the very first thing that I need to do to serve a couple is help them slow down enough to enjoy the opening of emotional intimacy, more vulnerability, more safety, more self-expression, more transparency and honesty. And about 75 or 80% of the time when I work with couples in this way, the sex life just takes off on its own. It's like, the kindling was there, all the prerequisites were there, there were some embers, and what fans the flames is the emotional intimacy. And then, well, then they have what they came for. 